All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining our Hitchhikers exclusive webinar, our Connectors Workshop. This workshop is a part of our winter release series where we're going through deep dives of some of our uh, headline items from the winter release. This one, we're gonna be talking about connectors. Uh, we've got a great uh, number of speakers lined up for you. You're gonna see some live demos from Jamie. You're gonna hear about some of our available connectors from Dan. I'm so excited to get started here and I'm gonna turn it over to Dan to kick us off. Hi everyone, my name is Dan and I'm on the product marketing team and I'll be joined by Jamie, who's a senior product manager for Connectors. I'm going to start off by giving a quick summary of Connectors and explain why they're so important. Then Jamie will demo a couple of different Connectors in action. Um, and then I'll talk about some future webinars we have planned and lastly, a Q&A. So make sure to send in your questions um, you know, throughout the presentation. Why are data connectors important? The knowledge graph is key to building great customer experiences. At Yax, we make it extremely easy to build and structure your knowledge graph. The most powerful knowledge graphs are robust with data that reflects your entire business. And we know that your data lives in a variety of different sources and places around the web. But we also know it can be challenging to unify that data into a single source. Data connectors give you the flexibility to create and manage integrations with one user-friendly tool, making it easier and faster to add your data and build out your knowledge graph. So our connectors follow an ETL framework, which stands for extract, transform, and load. So this means that we get your data from wherever, to, wherever it lives in a database um, or somewhere else, transforms to make changes to the data, and finally loading the data into the platform and structuring it into a knowledge graph, which we have a built out user interface for. I can't stress enough how powerful of a tool connectors are since the knowledge graph is only as strong as the data that's in it. Um, so it's important to keep that information as up to date as possible. Connectors with Yext. Um, so we know your data lives across a number of different environments, like I mentioned before. Um, and that's why Yext is built out a variety of integrations to connect data to, to the knowledge graph, um, including file uploads, APIs, the web crawler, apps, and more. Connectors are extremely customizable. So integrations can be as sophisticated or as simple as you'd like. So you can choose the frequency that your integrations run and you can map your data to knowledge graph fields with precision. This flexibility allows you to spend time where it matters most while capturing the data that you think is most important. Um, and lastly, we have a streamlined workflow. So easily manage data connections to your knowledge graph no matter how many sources you have. Um, in the connectors tab, you can create and manage all of your uploads and integrations in one place. This one-stop shop user interface um, will streamline your workflow so you can spend less time navigating and hopefully more time building. So here's our quote unquote connectors menu. Um, our connectors include pull from API, push from API, web crawler um, to scrape information from live sites, functions as a source, and native sources, including Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo, Greenhouse, Zendesk, Confluence, Drupal, HubSpot, and Guru. So all these options provide flexibility to match your workflow, um, but this is really only the beginning as we continuously expand um, our connectors integration options. And so Jamie's going to begin the workshop shortly. Um, she's gonna talk about um, and, and show um, how to, to do a native connector, pull from API connector, um, and function connector. So I'll turn it over to Jamie, who is the, the resident expert in connectors, um, to show you guys. And remember, this is going to be recorded. So if you want to watch anything back, you can, you know, we'll send that out after and you can um, take a look. All right. Thank you, Dan. Um, so my name is Jamie. And as Dan said, I'm uh, the product manager for connectors. And today I'm hoping to mainly focus on uh, building out three different connectors to really get into the weeds of what it looks like to build a connector and uh, attempt to show the breadth of options. So building a native connector, which should be extremely simple and fast, um, all the way through to building a function connector, which uh, is, requires writing a, a TypeScript function and can be, can be completely custom. So hoping to show the wide range and uh, while we won't cover every connector option, Today, uh, hopefully it gets you thinking about the types of things that you could build 
Um, and we encourage you, of course, to follow up and, and try different things out and, and read all of our guides that we have on our Hitchhiker site if you're interested in building a different type of connector. All right, so um, Dan, if you could stop sharing so I could share my screen. Okay, all right. So to start, I'm going to uh, walk through a native connector. So um, again, connectors is made to be a, kind of like a, a ETL tool uh, that does not require that you build or host any code outside of Yext. So to get started with building a connector, I'm gonna click this add data button. Um, and from here, you can see all of our options for getting data into the platform, but I'm gonna build a connector from scratch. I will highlight that we have a bunch of apps in our app directory that include uh, pre-built connectors that you're welcome to explore and install. Um, but it's also very easy to build a connector yourself. So I'm gonna focus on that today. So to start, I'm gonna choose build a connector. And you can see the options we have here for connector source. As Dan mentioned, uh, this is constantly growing. So you should expect to see more and more logos appearing here or options appearing here for pulling in data. Um, but today I'm gonna start by demoing a YouTube connector. So let's say I wanna pull YouTube videos into my Yext account. I'm gonna build a connector for that. So once I click YouTube, um, the next thing I'm prompted to do is um, give any required input so that uh, the connector knows exactly what data you're trying to pull. In this case, uh, the only required input is a channel ID. Um, so if I look over here, this is our, let's start playing. This is our Yext YouTube channel. Um, in the URL here, you can see the channel ID. Um, sometimes there's a vanity URL here. If you click on a video and then click back to the channel, you usually are able to find that uh, channel ID in the URL path. It's also something that if you're logged into your account, you can find as well. Um, so all I have to do is input my channel ID here. Um, and then we have this option to click pull, which will just do a little test request. And sure enough, uh, we got an API response back from YouTube. And this uh, includes the information about those videos in our Yext YouTube channel. So that's all I had to enter there. If I click continue. I'm now in the step of the connector where I'm specifying selectors. So a selector um, is, is the mechanism by which we know which things, which pieces of data you wanna pull out of this response. So if you wanted to, you could manually enter um, using JMES path, which is uh, very similar to JSON path, very easy to write. Um, you could specify selectors. So if I just you know said that I wanted kind, uh, excuse me, kind and ID dot video ID, I could do those individually. Um, we also have this option to add default selectors. So I'll click that and uh, we will automatically pull all of the possible um, pieces of data into a table for you. So uh, that's definitely the easiest way to go. So now I have all of the data here from uh, my YouTube response. So the next thing I would do would be adding the optional transforms. In this case, I don't really have any transforms that I want to add. Um, but you could do things here, uh, if I click add transform, um, you could transform the data that you see in this table in any way that you like. So we have different transforms that include things like text cleaning, fixing, so fixing capitalization, removing characters. Um, you could add a column. So if there's something that you did not get back from the response, but you wanted to add a static column for, so like maybe I will add um, a label here. So if I wanted to add a label specifically a YouTube video, maybe I'm planning to add more videos from other sources in the future, I could click apply and you see that I have a new column here for that. Um, we also have uh, a custom transform option um, where you can write a TypeScript function. I'll get into this a little bit later, uh, but this is something that pretty much means you could, you could write a completely custom transform in code if we don't have a transform that you're looking for here. So, the very last step um, after I've extracted and transformed um, is to map and load my data into the knowledge graph. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick my entity type. In this case, it's video. Um, and then I can map as many of these fields as I want to. So in this case, um, and for the sake of time, I'm not gonna map all of these things, but I will map this video ID to the entity ID. Um, and I will, let's see, what else do I wanna map here? The title, I'm gonna map to name. The description, I'm going to map to description. Um, and I think that that is good for now. For So YouTube doesn't actually return um, a full URL from their API response. You can derive any video URL using the video ID. So these are, these are the things that I'm going to map for now. Once I finish my mapping, um, 
I'll call this YouTube connector. Um, and I'll say save and run now. And excuse me, <clears throat> sure enough, my connector will start running and will fetch all of the YouTube uh, videos from the Yuxt channel and create entities in my graph. Now, um, if I go over here and look in the knowledge graph, sure enough, I see videos here. Um, again, I only mapped a few fields for the sake of time, but at any time, at any point in time, you can go back and edit the configuration. So you can change your mind, you can add different transforms, you can map more fields. Um, I could go tweak that video entity type and add custom fields. You could, you could completely come back and change uh, this connector and then rerun it. And that's completely fine. Uh, you can also, if I click back to the connector, um, you can also set this to run on a schedule. So this is something that you know you're going to be adding new videos all the time and you want to, you know, I run it hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or on a custom schedule, you can do that. Um, so this is not just a one and done thing. This is this could this could serve as your ongoing integration with YouTube. Okay, so that is a, a very simple connector. Um, I will emphasize again that for what we call native sources, so um, all of these sources that we have here that we already have pre-built integrations for, um, it really is that simple. So definitely take advantage of those and we will continue to grow the library of options there. Now, if there's something that you want to connect with that is not offered as a native source, uh, we have these generic options. So you can use the site crawler to crawl your website, um, push and pull from API. So this is, um, do you want us to go out and make a request on your behalf? We will hit um, an API endpoint. Uh, we can either make a get request or a post request there. Um, or do you already have an app running? You have a process uh, that, and you want to be the one to post the data to Yext, that is still an option. So more of a traditional ETL, similar to what you can do with our entities APIs. But if you wanted to take advantage of some of the in-platform connector framework and use our transforms and things like that, you could push data or post data to our API. And then function, I'll go over after this. Um, so I'm going to walk through an example of a pull from API connector. So um, in this case, I want to work with um, this the movie database API. Um, it's a which is a free API that's available and contains all information about movies. Um, so obviously, uh, just an example for the sake of this webinar, but you could connect to any API, any REST API, uh, using this option. So I'll click pull from API. And you can see here that it's now completely custom. So we, you can enter all of the information here uh, needed to fetch data from that specific API. So in this case, again, I already have this all laid out. I'm going to connect to this, the movie database API, um, my base URL, uh, which I got from their documentation. Let me close this. Is this, um, and then Again, we do support get and post. This is a, a get request. Uh, then we support uh, many options for things like authentication. You can add custom query parameters, custom uh, HTTP headers. Um, and then we have a few options for pagination control. So I will walk through what that would look like here. So the, a the movie database API um, supports API key authentication. Um, the key that's used um, in the query parameter is API underscore key. Um, and then I already generated an API key before this. So I will see that here. Um, for uh, pagination in this specific API, I looked at their documentation and was able to find out that they have page-based pagination. So we support page-based pagination, cursor, link header, and offset limit. Um, in this case, it's page-based. So I will pick that. Um, the page key that is passed to each request to specify which page you're on is page, and the start value is one. Um, in this case, there is, I, I don't need to supply a limit, they have a default limit, um, but there is a total pages key. Um, so this total pages key, I'll show what this looks like in the response once I um, make a test request, but this contains the total pages and that is found in the response body. So now that I've entered some information, I'll click pull. And you can see that we did in fact make a request to this movie database API. You can see information coming back um, about movies that you can see title, overview. Um, and if I collapse this for a second, you can see that total pages key that tells me how many pages 
um, I should expect. And that's what I, I specified in the pagination uh, section of my API details. So we were able to make a request, which is great. So now I'm gonna click continue to proceed with building my connector. So the next thing that you need to do when building a custom connector like this is tell the connector if you expect each of your uh, responses that you get back from the API to contain a list of objects or one at a time. And we need to know that so we know kind of how to translate each uh, response if we're going to eventually turn it into multiple entities or one entity. In this case, when we looked at the response, you can see that each response contains multiple movies. Um, so in this case, it's a list of objects. And then you need to tell us the list key. So that would be, you know, where is that list contained in the response? And in this case, uh, we actually will pre, we will suggest some options for you based on um, when we take a look at the response and find different patterns in arrays, we'll tell you, okay, um, it's probably this. So in this case, there's one suggestion and that is correct. So I pick results and I click continue. And now we're off, we're in the exact same flow as we were with YouTube. So we've set up our initial steps of how to fetch data from that movie database API. Uh, and now we need to specify those selectors. So in this case, um, again, I could specify selectors one at a time by going through and um, picking out what I, what I want and entering their path. But I'm, again, going to choose default selectors because it's just significantly easier. Um, and there you can see we have a full data table from that first page um, with movie titles and things like overview, popularity, original language. So um, now at this point, I could choose if this all looks good to me, I could choose to proceed and uh, immediately map data to, I have a movie entity type that I've already created. Um, and that's something I could, could do right now. But I actually think in this case, I'm gonna add a couple of transforms. So for example, if you take a look, uh, you can see that this poster path here um, is a relative path, a relative URL that refers to presumably a image uh, for the movie poster. And that's something I would like to have in my knowledge graph because I eventually would like to surface that in the answers experience that I'm gonna build. Um, but in order to store that in the knowledge graph, I'm gonna need a full URL. So this is not uh, going to work as expected. So in this case, I'm gonna choose to add a transform. Um, and in order to do that, I could, I could do this in many ways. Uh, you could combine transforms in a lot of different ways to get the same result. There is a way, you know, I could do this with a custom function transform um, that would probably be overkill in this case because I'm gonna prepend the same base URL to each one. Um, I could do uh, a fancy find and replace where I have a regular expression that corresponds to the start of a line and drop in a base. In this case, I think I'm going to um, just add a static column and call it uh, poster URL base. And the column value, again, this is something that I got from their documentation, um, but this is the URL base um, that they expect. You can pass in different sizes, but I'm going with this size. So, all right, so if I click apply, you'll see that I have my poster URL base here now, um, but again, still not good enough. I need to actually combine that with the poster path. So I'm gonna add another transform on top. Um, we have a merge columns transform. So I'm going to merge uh, that poster URL base with the poster path. There it is. Um, and in this case, I just want to merge them together, no delimiter. So I'm going to leave the delimiter blank, but I could add you know, one character, many characters, and we will use that delimiter to combine them. And the new column name is going to be poster image URL. Click apply. And there it is. We now have a full URL. Um, for each poster, which is great. So you can see that's actually a full URL. Um, all right, so now that I've added my transforms, I'm going to map my data uh, to this movie entity that I had created, the movie entity type I created in advance. So again, I'm only gonna do a subset of fields for the sake of time. There's the ID, um, there's the title, which I'll map to the entity name, um, overview, I actually have an overview field here. Um, I didn't have a popularity field. Let's see. We also, I want to make sure that I map this um, image URL that I worked so hard to create. So I will put that as my 
poster image and then map it specifically to the URL and click apply. Uh, you can see we get some quick validation here. So if I were to say, um, have tried to map, let me just show for a quick example. If I had tried to map something like this, uh, the poster path to the poster image URL and click apply, um, it's going to check if that looks correct. In this case, I guess it would be able to, it, it did look correct, but if it did not look correct, we would get quick validation saying that, um, that something is wrong and, and it gives you an indication that you should evaluate the data. So poster image, URL, apply. Okay, so, all right, that looks good for now. I do actually have an original language field, so I'll map that as well. Great, so I'll click save. Uh, movie and again i'll click save and run now so as soon as you click run now it's going to start to run and it's going to make those api calls um, and should start creating entities which is good so i won't wait for the whole thing to run i'll just hop over and see my movies um, and you can see that we were successfully able to get the movie title the overview and even those images which is pretty exciting um, so just to reiterate what we just built, uh, that was pretty much an entire ETL with a, a custom API endpoint that we didn't have previous, or Yax does not have a, a pre-existing um, integration with. And while I did have to do some custom work to tweak the data, uh, that was pretty fast and I didn't have to write or host a single piece of code outside of Yax. So you don't need to spin up a server to host an integration. This would be something you could build completely um, within our platform. And just like that YouTube connector, you could set this movie connector to run on a schedule. So if you wanted this to be an ongoing integration, you certainly could. Um, okay, so the last connector type that I want to walk through is definitely our most flexible, um, and that is a function connector. So functions, um, again, I'll click to build a new connector. Functions are a Yux platform feature that is uh, relatively new that allows you to write custom TypeScript code um, and actually upload that to your account. So again, you have to write the code, but you don't actually have to host it anywhere. You upload the TypeScript function to your account, and then you choose when to execute that function, um, and then Yux will execute it on your behalf. So um, TypeScript, which uh, is uh, very simple. If you learn to write a TypeScript function, this could be extremely powerful because uh, while you do write the code, you know, a lot of oftentimes a lot of the difficulty of trying to uh, write and run an ETL is that you do need to actually spin up somewhere to host the ETL um, and monitor any issues. In this case, you would simply be providing the logic via a TypeScript function and Yax would do all of the executing on your behalf. So uh, just to talk a little bit about how functions work tactically, um, the, the way that you write a TypeScript function um, is actually by developing it locally on your machine. So in this case, um, I wrote a function using Visual Studio Code um, on my own desktop. And then um, I'll show how you get this into your account using the X command line interface. Um, so for this example, it's another kind of silly example. I'm using um, this public API called the Star Wars API. Um, and if you take a look, here's the Star Wars API site. Um, if you take a look, you can see that um, if I make a call to this API endpoint slash people, make this request, you see that it returns um, a list of results of, that contains all the people that are in all the Star Wars movies. So um, if I just wanted to build a simple pull from API connector, I could do that as well, just like I did with the movie database. But for this example, I'm going to do a couple of extra complex things that might um, be better suited for writing a function. So you take a look at the response here. You can see that for a given character from Star Wars, uh, they have a lot of uh, referenced entities. So in this case, um, Luke Skywalker's home world, they return this specific planet URL. Um, and sometimes that's great, like we might want to store these as separate entities in our knowledge graph, and so um, it's good to have references here, but in this case, I would prefer to store the home world as just the name of the planet that each character is from and not necessarily have to um, uh, have separate entities for planets in this case. So 
if I take a look and just run this request, you can see what this looks like. If I made a request uh, to that nested URL that was returned in the, the people response, you can see that we get information about each planet. So for my integration, my desire is to uh, fetch the list of people and then for each person kind of swap this, uh, this reference to their home planet to the name of the planet. Um, a couple other things I'm gonna need to do here is if you take a look, they actually don't really provide a very obvious um, option for an ID. They have name, height, mass, hair color, all the movies that they were in, et cetera. And there is this unique URL, um, but they don't have a specific uh, ID field. So we're also gonna do something in our function to convert this URL into an ID. So to take a look at the function that I wrote here in TypeScript, you can see that um, the first thing I'm doing, well, I can come back to this part about pagination, but really uh, the first thing I'm doing when I call this fetch people function um, is placing a, or making a request to this endpoint. So the same one that I just looked at in that um, uh, API Explorer online. So I'm going to make a request to this endpoint, um, and then I'm gonna parse the uh, results so that I can get, look at each individual person. So once I parse the results, I'm going to iterate through each person in the results and then uh, do a couple of things. One thing I'm gonna do is parse that URL that's returned um, to get just that ID. Um, I've chosen to just prepend the word people dash to the ID um, just because these IDs are not very unique looking. I think they're unique within this response, but the ID of one, two, three is not necessarily the best. So I just wanted to add something a little bit more unique. So attach people dash and then the ID fetch from that URL. Um, and then again, I'm gonna swap that planet ID for planet name um, by making a nested call here. Uh, so first I get the um, URL of that home world that's returned. And then I'm gonna make a request to that URL and parse out the name and then stick it back um, in place of the home world URL here. So I'm gonna iterate through each person, get the ID, get the home world name. Um, and then last but not least, I'm going to actually return um, those results. So a couple of key things to note here is that uh, right now it's a requirement that any uh, functions that you write as sources for connectors have a string to string function signature. So we expect that the input passed in is a string. Um, the first time that we execute your function for you, we pass in an empty string. There is no string input. Um, then we expect that you return a string. So in this case, I had JSON and I, I stringified it before returning it. That's one thing to note. Another thing to note is that we actually can support API pagination within functions. Um, and we do that by uh, using this next page token um, in the response. So if you return a value for next page token, uh, that is an indication to our system to execute this again. Um, and we pass the value that you include here back as your input here. And that's included in the page uh, in the page token key of your input. So again, if you want to use pagination, uh, you can do that by returning um, any arbitrary value here, whatever you need to support pagination in next page token. And then you would expect that we pass it back to you um, in the input JSON um, under the key page token. So uh, this is something I did take advantage of because the Star Wars API does uh, have pagination, just to show quickly what that looks like. Um, they pass it the entire URL in this uh, next key. So that is what I used here. Um, so I passed, I, I grabbed that from the response, passed it back as the next page token. And then I check for that at the start of each um, execute, execution of this function. I, I check if that was passed back in and if so, use that in place of this base URL to make my request. Um, so that's kind of how the function is laid out. Um, when you write a, a, a function for Yext, uh, that's wrapped in as something that we call a plugin. So you need to supply two files. So this actual mod.ts that contains the uh, functions that you want to execute, as well as the resource file here um, that provides an ID for your plugin. Um, and then the schema so that we know this thing is a plugin. So the plugin is the wrapper for your function. 
So I already have that set up here on my machine. Um, and if I go over here to the terminal, I'll show exactly how I get that into my account. So um, Yext has a tool that you may or may not be familiar with called the Yext CLI or command line interface. And that allows you to interact with your account programmatically. Um, so that allows you to do things like pull, pull um, and apply configuration as code resources that reflect the configuration of your account. Um, and in this case, we're going to apply these resources to our account uh, so that we can then use it at, for um, in a connector. So um, before this, I already set up uh, the XCLI and already logged into my account via the XCLI. You would do that using this yext init command. It would walk you through exactly what you need to do. I've already done that. So now I'm going to yeah, uh, execute this command, yex resources apply. And then um, this is the local folder where I have both of these files stored. So I'll click continue. It's going to ask me, is this my account? Yes, it is. Um, and do I want to overwrite the configuration resources? Yes. And you can see that it detected an update for this plugin, which is correct. So now that the plugin exists in my account and it contains the function that I want to execute, I can go in and create a connector that uses that function. So if I click um, function as my source, next I pick the uh, plugin, which again is Star Wars API. And the function here is fetch people. That's what I had named my function, um, which you can see right here. So I'm just gonna do a test run. So if this goes as expected, I should see a raw response that sure enough contains the people JSON object that I returned as a string. Um, and, and it did successfully exchange that home world uh, URL for the home world name Tatooine. Um, and you should see that reflected for each character. Um, it should do that. So perfect, it worked. Um, all right, so once I do that and click continue, now I'm in the exact same flow that we were in before with the um, pull from API. So hopefully this is all um, coming together for you that you can see that really for each connector type, you're only doing a couple of custom things in the beginning, uh, depending on the source that you choose. But once you kind of configure your source, you're in the exact same transform and load flow, regardless of what that source had been. So now, um, again, I need to decide, I need to tell the connector if it's a list of objects or one object. We just took a look and saw that it was a list of objects and they were nested under that key people. So I'll pick that, click continue. I can add my default selectors, oopsies. And there they are. You can see uh, that we pulled all of the information that you would expect to get back from that Star Wars API. Um, and again, just to hammer it home that we successfully made that transform um, within our connect within our function uh, to swap the uh, URL for the actual planet name. Um, and then you can also see there's that ID that we generated that's there now. So in this case, um, I am going to perform a couple of transforms just because I don't love the uh, capitalization that's returned for some of these. So I'm going to, um, for eye color, fix the capitalization. Um, I'll do it for hair color and eye color, and I'm going to change it to proper case. And there you see it changed to proper case, which is great. Um, but I think the rest of this generally looks good to me. Uh, because we wrote a function, I did this um, transforming and extracting this value from the ID in the function, but I could definitely have done that here as well. If you didn't want to do it in the function, I could do something very similar to what we did in the movie database where I perform a couple of transforms to extract the ID here from the URL. So that's also a, an option. Um, but okay, I've uh, executed my transform and now I'm gonna map data. Again, I already have this Star Wars person custom entity type uh, pre-built. I did this before the webinar started. So if I pick that, um, then I just need to map my fields. So here's the name of the person. I'm gonna go all the way down here to get that ID and map it to entity ID. Um, Let's see, what other fields should we do? Definitely that home world. And then I think I had eye color here and hair color. Um, okay, great. 
just to reiterate, you know, what you're looking at here are the list of fields that are on that entity type I've created. You can always go back and add more fields to your entity type. They would show up here and then you could map more. So I'll click save, Star Wars connector, and then I'll save and run now. And at this point, it's probably getting repetitive, but hopefully you get the, the point that now this is going to run and is going to create new entities. Um, again, for any connector type, you can add a schedule. So if I wanted this to run on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or custom schedule, I could. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it at none. Um, and you see it ran to completion, and I see that I have 82 new entities. So if I hop back over to the knowledge graph, I should see our movie, um, our movie connector also ran to completion. So now I have 1300 movie entities, and I have 82 of these Star Wars entities, which is great. Um, so that is all I had in terms of walking through uh, different options for connectors. Um, just to repeat myself again, um, the list of options we have for connector sources is always growing. Uh, you should definitely take a look at what we have today, but know that you always have in your back pocket the ability to build a very custom connector using our crawler um, API options or function. So hopefully with that toolkit, you could build some pretty sophisticated um, integrations without needing to do much, um, much, if anything at all, outside of Yext. So that's it. Thanks, Jamie. Um, and I will share my screen again quickly. Um, so thanks again, Jamie. That was really great. Again, this um, webinar is being recorded. So make sure um, to check your inbox and you got this recording if you want to watch anything. Um, again, just to make sure that you, know, you have the best summary of connectors and can go in and, and you know, kind of do it yourself. Um, in terms of other information, um, please go to hitchhikers.ex.com to visit our Hitchhikers site um, to see an overview of connectors. Um, we have modules on best practices on connectors, as well as a step-by-step -step guide for how to create a crawler. <clears throat> um, and then additionally, we have release notes on all of our new features for the Windows 21 release, as well as blog posts and web pages highlighting the key elements on the for, for the winter release as well, um, as well as community posts um, where you can see previous questions asked and ask your own questions um, to learn more about some new features. And we have two, two more webinars coming up um, on the about the winter 21 release. Um, so we have next week we have listings modernization, um, which will give a summary of um, all the new screens added for listings. Um, and then lastly, um, explore answers headless react, um, which is so so we have some exciting stuff coming up as well. Um, so that's the conclusion of our webinar. Um, but we have some Q and a right now, um, so I can turn it over um, to Nick to um, talk about any questions we have. Cool. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to pop those into the Q and a chat. Um, before we get started here, just a housekeeping item. Uh, we, I did get asked if anyone was going to be able to see this webinar after the fact. Everyone who registered will get an email probably tomorrow morning with the recording. And you can also find this and many of our other webinars on the Yext YouTube channel. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for that. We've got uh, one question here, Jamie, uh, asking, what, what's kind of the maturity model? Where do you start with, uh, with some of these connectors? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I would say to get your feet wet with connectors, I would personally try uh, testing out some of our, our native sources just to understand how the flow works. Um, and you also don't even really need to have an understanding of how, yeah, you do not need to have an understanding of how APIs work at all um, to use our native sources. So I would definitely take a look. The YouTube example that I walked through is probably one of our most straightforward um, and doesn't require that you have a YouTube account or anything like that. So that's kind of a, a good starting point. Um, beyond that though, I would say um, it kind of depends on what your needs are. So uh, while if you're not super familiar with APIs, the pull from API case might have seemed a little daunting, but most of the information required uh, to, to build one of those connectors is always encompassed in the API documentation for the third party that you're trying to fetch data from. So it's really not as intimidating as you might think. And we have some good guides that will walk you through all the various options there. So um, 
and yeah, we're always improving and always adding more. So if there's, if we're missing something that, um, or if there's any uh, connector sources that you think would be really valuable to see built as, as native sources, definitely let us know um, in the community or on the ideas board. Um, and uh, we can take a look. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a great point is that if you, if you do have any feedback or ideas, especially for some native sources, absolutely let us know on the ideas board or in the community. Uh, we've got one question here. Uh, is it necessary to store information in the X platform or can the result of connectors be evaluated on the fly through request to the answers API? Um, good question. So uh, in this case, no, all the data that we pull in from connectors does go into your knowledge graph. So um, which then in turn is passed, you know, to answers. And uh, for most of these connectors, um, I'd say that's definitely the end goal that people are trying to pull data into their knowledge graph to then either surface it in the answers pages or listings. Um, you don't have to, of course, with any entities in knowledge graph, you do not have to edit them in the knowledge graph or really interact with them in the knowledge graph at all if that's not um, appealing to you or doesn't fit your use case. Uh, we also have really uh, sophisticated permissioning models that will let you, you know, pull in entities um, that some users can or cannot see. So if that's a concern, that's also something that, um, that you can handle with uh, custom roles. But no, at, uh, at this point, anything that you pull in from your using connectors um, is going to be stored in the knowledge graph. Um, we've got a last question here. Um, I mean, obviously connectors came out, uh, this is this is my own commentary, but connectors came out around a year ago and we built so much uh, in the past year. What, what are we looking to do next in the world of connectors, Jamie? Oh yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'd say we're, we're right now looking to figure out ways to uh, make it um, even more streamlined. So you saw if, if anyone had seen connectors, um, you know, a year ago, we didn't have a lot of these options we have now to um, guess selectors for you. It was a lot more manual. Um, so we're moving in a direction of trying to make the flow a lot easier to use. And so I'd say we're, we're trying to do that um, even more so by adding, uh, reducing friction in the flow while still maintaining that high level of um, customizability. So that uh, is one focus and then definitely just continuing to grow our um, options for sources. So. Right now, while we don't have ETAs on these things, we're exploring different options like being able to pick up a file from an FTP on a specific cadence and having that trigger a new connector run um, where we ingest the data in the file. We're looking at um, PDF ingestion, so being able to extract text from PDFs, um, as well as other native sources that um, we have not yet been able to build. So I'd say hoping to grow our source list pretty immensely. Um, and then one really specific point, uh, we're also working on improving the usability of the crawler source. So trying to find better ways to um, help people identify kind of what the info is on their crawled pages and making that a more seamless experience. Awesome. That's great. I mean, looking, definitely looking forward to all of that and looking forward to having another webinar when we, when we come out with all that amazing stuff so we can walk through some of that. Um, I wanted to, uh, to wrap up here. I wanted to, to first, uh, Thank everyone who joined the call. Thank you to our Hitchhikers audience. And as Dan mentioned, definitely go to grab more information on connectors on the Hitchhikers site. And I wanted to also thank our presenters, Dan and Jamie. Great job. A lot of great content here. I look forward to, to seeing more in the future. And so thank you all again. Have a great day.